I know has made a difference because your creed is a universal creed. Is it really credible? You were totally unaware. I certainly knew of some of Scientology's abuses. This is what voting yes on Prop 31 means. Yes on 31 ends the sale of candy-flavored tobacco products. Yes stops big tobacco from targeting our kids. Yes protects kids from nicotine addiction. Vote yes on 31. Clippers, Jazz, Sunday at 7 on KTLA. Good morning, I'm Eric Spillman in for Frank Buckley. Synagogues here at home and across the country reacting to a scare in New Jersey. We'll explain. And two major sports teams colliding here in Los Angeles. What fans need to know before we're coming out to Exposition Park tomorrow, I'll explain coming up. Good morning, I'm Jessica Holmes. A massive and intense fire in Boyle Heights overnight. Many explosions heard from the flames. We'll tell you what made the fire even more dangerous to fight. And I'm Samantha Cortese in this morning for Sam Rubin. We are continuing to give away tickets to the very exclusive Coast 103.5 holiday party at Disneyland. Don't miss it. Plus, Jay Farrow coming up live. And did someone say party? It is a party here in Villa Park at Villa Park High School. Did you know this is home of Henry DiCarlo? That's right. The spirit is right here. Coming up, I have all the details. Stick with me right after this. Uh, they're having some fun at school today, 9.59, uh, just about, let's say, 10 o'clock. And uh, it is a chilly start to the day. Temperature's going to be a little on the cool side today, warming up over the weekend, and then cooling right back down with rain heading into Monday and Tuesday. Coastal. robbery hit and run in West Hollywood. We go up to Mike Case for the details. Good morning, Mike. Well, good morning, I tell you, and it happened right in broad daylight. Not that you need a reminder to be aware of your surroundings, but here's what happened just moments ago. West Hollywood Sheriff's uniformed officers responding to a robbery that was occurring. They originally received the call as a fight that took place in this parking lot here to the rear of 9,000, back uh, right around 9030 Sunset Boulevard. They got on the scene and discovered that a man and wife suspect team had produced a gun and robbed a woman of a gold ring. That when they attempted to flee the parking lot, she apparently got in the way of the car and they struck her with the car. Now she's been taken by LA County paramedics to a local hospital here. We'll wait to find out how she is. But again, a street robbery occurring right here, 9,000 blocks near Doheny. They got a ring from her, but they produced a gun. Very terrifying circumstances here for this woman. Please be aware of your surroundings when you uh, exit your car, even in the middle of the daytime here. Now, the suspect is described as a male and a, male and a female, the male wearing no shirt, a black mask, the female wearing dark clothes. Crime occurred in the alleyway or the parking area to the rear of the location. They're looking for that uh, man and wife team. Robbery at gunpoint, a black sedan. If you saw anything, if you're in the area, West Hollywood Sheriff's like to talk to you. That's it from Sky 5 over West Hollywood. I'm Mike Case, back to you. All right, Mike, thank you. Deep developing news now out of LA's West Adams neighborhood where a cyclist was struck and killed by a hit and run driver. The victim, described by police as a male in his 50s, was riding in a marked crosswalk on Adams when he was struck at the intersection of Hauser Boulevard about 11.30 p.m. The cyclist was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver fled. Police have not released any information about the suspect or the vehicle involved. Firefighters are mopping up after a massive fire at an e-cigarette and butane storage facility. Around 1.30 this morning, flames engulfed the building in this industrial complex in Boyle Heights near 12th Street and Pico Boulevard. Hundreds of small explosions were going off inside as heat 
ruptured butane tanks. That made it difficult for emergency crews to safely battle that fire. Thankfully, they got it under control about an hour and a half later. No word yet on what sparked the fire, but arson investigators are still on the scene. No injuries were reported. The FBI has located a man it says was responsible for threats to synagogues in New Jersey. Those threats caused law enforcement here in L.A. to be on alert. KTLA's Alina Bovian live in West Hollywood with more on that for us. Alina, good morning. Jessica, good morning. Well, this is a warning heard across the country, and the FBI says this is a man with radical extreme views. They are in touch with him. They are speaking with him, and they say the situation has been neutralized. Now, take a look. This is the updated statement from the FBI Newark office. That's the agency that initially put out the warning yesterday. It says, we identified the source of the threat who no longer possesses a threat to the community. As always, we would like to remind the public to remain vigilant. Now, the threat was made yesterday on a social media platform visited frequently by extremists. No specific person or place was mentioned in the threat. The FBI initially said it was a broad threat towards synagogues in New Jersey, which prompted a major police presence outside many. It's not clear if this person will face any charges. NBC News in New York reporting this morning that the man may have autism and some sort of past trauma. Given the rise of recent anti-Semitic threats and acts of violence against Jewish people in the United States, in recent years, the FBI took this threat very seriously. Since 2015, anti-Semitic incidents have jumped from 941 to more than 2,700 in 2021. I just want to implore the Jewish community to be vigilant, to say something if they see something, and to be in touch with local law enforcement. Take this seriously when it comes from the FBI. And local law enforcement here in Los Angeles certainly taking this seriously. The West Hollywood Sheriff's Station putting this tweet out saying, For our Jewish residents, business owners, community leaders, and members in West Hollywood, please rest assured we are actively monitoring the situation and increasing patrols around sensitive areas. Now back out here live again, this is a message from local law enforcement reminding everyone here to just be vigilant. If you see something, whether it's on social media or out on the street, report it. I'm Lena Bergen reporting live in West Hollywood, KTLA 5 News. Alina, thank you. Brooklyn Nets superstar Kyrie Irving has been suspended over his tweet that contained a link to an anti-Semitic movie. The team suspended him for at least five games without pay for his repeated failure to, quote, unequivocally say he has no anti-Semitic beliefs. Hours after the suspension was announced, Irving did apologize in a post on Instagram, writing in part, quote, to all Jewish families and communities that are hurt and affected by my post, I am deeply sorry to have caused you pain. I apologize. On Wednesday, the Nets and Irving agreed to donate a half million dollars each to the Anti-Defamation League. The CEO, however, says they cannot in good conscience accept the donation. Controversy in Santa Clarita has a community divided about whether it's appropriate to fly a thin blue line flag at a high school football game. The Saugus High School football team has a tradition of running onto the field with an American flag and a thin blue line flag to support law enforcement at the beginning of each game. This season, Saugus' head coach decided to stop using the thin blue line flag after some students reported that it made them feel uncomfortable. Supporters of the flag say it's not a political statement, but those opposed say it's at uh, or it has become a symbol of white supremacy after it was flown at racially charged events. Most of us know this flag has been co-opted by hate groups. I want to touch on why those groups use this flag. This symbol invokes a mob mentality. You see it with the hate group rallies. It was there on January 6th, and it's present now at the Fort Saugus football games. It was never created as a hate symbol, and it should not be created, or it should not be made to one now. We have an obligation to educate our students. We have this opportunity to do that, to teach them the history behind what the symbol actually means. School began flying the flag to show support for law enforcement who responded to a 2019 shooting on campus that left two people dead and three injured. The school superintendent says discussion and decision about the flag will need to be added to a future meeting's agenda.
and parking for the MLS title game is not being offered because U.S. has control of the parking lots. KTLA's Jennifer McGraw is live in Exposition Park to explain. Pretty actually simple explanation. <laughs> we got the parking lots. We're USC. You can't park here. There, I've done your job. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> I mean, that's essentially it. The, I would be upset if I was an MLS fan. No tailgating, which they're used to. Also, this is a newer team, so it's only been around for five years, but the first time that they're going to the championship to win it all for the MLS. But a stone's throw away is the USC game, and obviously that's been around for decades, and it's the homecoming game, so they get top priority. The good news is MLS fans, they can bus on into the stadium. There's no parking for MLS fans. Once again, the homecoming game is tomorrow night. Luckily, that doesn't start until 730. The MLS game starts at 1. LAFC is offering a few options. You can take the Metro, which is super easy. You can always park at Dodger Stadium. You can park at lot 1. And a bus and a shuttle will take you starting at 9 o'clock back and forth uh, in the beginning of the game and at the end of the game. There is going to be some crossover because tailgaters for the USC game can come six hours before kickoff, which is 730. So they'll be out here tailgating just about right after the game starts around 1:30. LAFC radio announcer I spoke with earlier. He says it's all worth it. And this team that's taking on Philadelphia is going to be an incredible matchup.